you know, honestly, I just have this a passion for wireless communications. I really enjoy it. It's it's like magic. It's amazing it even works. It's amazing that radio communications was ever even really discovered, being that it's not something you can feel, touch, or taste. And that's one of the things that really keeps me going. I've really helped push GPA to, to more and more industrial wireless work. And I just have so much fun with it. I really enjoy the challenges of it. And then when the job's done, just seeing everything work, you know, it's that personal satisfaction of a job well done. Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger. And on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we're going to have a fun hero episode where we're going to sit down with Scott McNeil, who is the Senior Network and Security Engineer at Global Process Automation. So welcome, Scott. Hey, how are you doing today? Good, man. How are you? Oh, man. Uh, if I were any better, I'm going to be able to stand myself. I hear you, buddy. I hear you. We love to start these hero episodes off by giving our listeners a chance just to understand a little bit about you and your journey. So can you walk us through that a little bit? Sure. Probably, oh gosh, about 15, 16 years ago, I, I got into the Wi-Fi game and started with a company, a wireless integrator called Eproach Communications. And we did all kinds of integrations. We did a lot of little small local beach resorts, and we ended up pretty much going up and down the East Coast doing uh, multi-user dwellings, i.e. apartment complexes, hotels, other resorts. My favorite one is we did a resort in the British Virgin Islands of Anguilla. It was 12 days of hard work, but it's the British Virgin Islands. It was gorgeous. From there, moved on to our local school system and was responsible for a fair amount of wireless as far as in, in 14 different schools and administrative buildings here in our county. Moved on from there to one of our local colleges where I spent quite a bit of time and I took their wireless from just a few hotspots throughout their downtown campus to uh, full total coverage and integration across all four of their campuses, implementing uh, user access control and machine authentication and increase their user base from 15 people a day to when I left the college, they were well over uh, 3,000 users a day on their systems. And it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed my time in the private sector, and I really enjoyed my time in, in higher ed. Then I got recruited in, into the outfit I'm with now, with GPA, and it's been no looking back. I, I've been taking my my wireless skills and, and applying them to the industrial environment, and I've been learning a whole lot along the way. And I, I got to tell you, man, while I, I'm a I'm an OT network guy, by far the wireless projects are, are my favorite because that has just for years now has been my my personal passion. Very cool, man. Now, where did you go to school at to to study some of this? Well, you know, I, I started actually here in Wilmington at Cape Fear uh, Community College, third largest community college in the state. I learned quite a bit. I got my, my associates in network administration, also graduated the Cisco Academy, you know, through Cape Fear. And then I went to work and I worked for, gosh, eight, 10 years and got pretty darn far on that, that two-year degree. And then finally, we were in a position and I went back to school online and graduated from ECU with a degree in what the, what they call industrial technology, which is their IT degree. And essentially, it, it's another networking degree. So school was good. I was there towards the end. I was getting really burnt out. I was done. <laughs> but hey, go Pirates. Now, so you did that all, was it 100% online, you said? 100% online, ECU has a fantastic education uh, department as far as distance learning for their IT degree. Their instructors are great. And even after being in the field for as long as I was, I still had a lot to learn. So that that was nice too. Nice, man. That's really cool. You never stop learning. And anytime that you sit there and you think that you know everything, uh, uh, life is going to smack you down because you're going to run so into somebody who knows so much more than you and they're going to embarrass you. So... That's right. He's very true, man. Very true. Now you spent a lot of time in industry and you work with a lot of our, our heroes. You're definitely one of our heroes too, but what are you seeing as some of the challenges out there, man? What's hit, hitting in front of you? Um, well, you know, I work for an automation company and, and automation really, that's a big part of what's going on in the universe right now. And really, I, I think more and more as we go along, it's the need for industrial security professionals and 
industrial wireless professionals because there's just not enough of them out there. GPA is a company, one of the top 100 integrators. We got named one of the top 100 integrators in, in the country. We just keep getting bigger, but there's not a lot of industrial integrators that, that do everything soup to nuts from not only from your PLC and DCS and SCADA, but all of your network deployment that goes along with that, um, all of your cybersecurity deployment, all of your wireless deployment. There's not a lot of us that do that, and there need the industry needs more of us. No doubt, man. You, you, you're all over it. We, we hear a lot of times, too, when, when I talk to people about the challenges, it's about there's so many people retiring and that aging workforce there's nobody backfilling that. And this is maybe some of that, but also this is a new skill set. That A brand new skill set. Right? Yeah, and you're losing a lot of that knowledge transfer because the, what's in place is not being re replaced fast enough in order to gain that knowledge from the, the 20 and 30 and 40 year veterans. But now you add all of this new technology on top of all that, and, and it's even worse. Now, part of this podcast, what we're trying to do is inspire people, man, and to get them to come to this industry, to embrace it, because it's great. It's the people listening and the people out there working these plants. If there's some advice that you could offer up from your experience, that if somebody out there is listening, that they're considering coming in, what would that be? You know, if you're into tech and you're into all the various aspects, IT, and you want something challenging, but you want something that's really rewarding, don't be scared, man. Go into the industrial sector. The OT needs people who know how uh, to use this equipment, who can speak the language, and who can help understand how to deploy it properly. But on the flip side of that, you also have to make sure you're flexible enough to understand you've got to operate by the OT rules of the road, which are different than the IT rules of the road. So if you're flexible and, and you really want to do some cool stuff and go, and honestly, the, the, one of the coolest things about this job is all the different facilities we get exposed to and go into because, you know, oil refineries, damn, those things are cool, man, with just how they're developed and, and how everything runs. It's fascinating. I had personally haven't been into an automotive plant, but I, I that's one of the things that I, I want to see that. I want to see a car being built. I want to be part of that. Oh, hey, you know what? I did work there at this BMW plant and it was impressive. So all these just amazing facilities that you get to go into, that's half the enjoyment of the job right there. No doubt, man. I think we've heard a couple of people say, you know, my life is that show how it's made. And you get to Absolutely. do that when you're in the industrial that's a sector. perfect reference. You're there. You're in the plants, man. What if you're seeing steel being made or like you said pulp and paper being made it's just it's fascinating you know yeah but dude it, it's i find it fascinating you know um and, and it's one of the things that, that helps keep me going i'm doing a job i love to do i'm getting to see some really cool places in the process and really you get to meet a lot of great people too so it, it's definitely not a job for your anti-social engineer you've got to be fairly outgoing to yeah. be able to make the most of it. That's right. And have a little fun with it. I was talking with a lady yesterday who's a director at, a, at an integrator and she was just talking to me about her network and how influential people have been in her career and in helping her along her path. And when you just said that, it made me think of her and some of the things she was saying. And I love on these episodes to give the opportunity for you to recognize, you know, that there are people or mentors or people who've been influential to you in your career and your path. Cause I think that's important to, uh, to recognize the people that have helped us and, and give them that, that, that shout out. It's interesting because there's so many people who have moved in and out of my life work wise and, so many people that I've learned a lot from. One of, one of my heavier influencers, a guy by the name of Marty Hollingsworth, he owned uh, Eproach Communications, who I worked for right after I graduated with my first degree. And, you know, he is the one who really instilled in me the, the, the passion for wireless communications. And for that, I will, I will always be grateful. He was a great guy to work for. And, and we had a lot of good times and did a lot of great work from metro area Wi-Fi to integrating in, in beach houses. It was just awesome seeing the end result and tur a turnkey installation, turning it over to the end users and them just being super happy with it and just the magic of wireless in general. So he really influenced me a lot there. And then my parents, they're both, oh, actually, I, my, my, my dad, my stepmom, and then my mom, my stepdad, they're all just hardworking people and really helped instill that work ethic in me and to love what you do. But those are probably the most influential yeah. overall. But I, I kind of, 
I learn a lot from everybody I work with. I really try to pick up on things from other team members to number one, that to, to help me sharpen up my game. But number two, it just makes me a, a, a better overall person. Does that make sense? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Mm. No doubt. And if you're not learning, if you're not constantly learning something new, you're not going anywhere. You're, you're, no, you're, you're not. You're sitting still and, and you're stuck and that's it. Being stuck is, a, is not only is a terrible place to be, but it's a terrible feeling to have. No doubt. No doubt, man. I really appreciate you walking through that. And you may like this question, too. With your personality, I think you may have some fun with it. You know, people have perceptions of certain professions. And when they hear the terms, of, you know, security or networking engineer, they may think of this dude walking around with a uh, pocket full of pens or some blue hose <laughs> hanging out of his pocket, some Ethernet cable, things like that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not saying that's what they're thinking, but it could be. So if you had a, if you could de- uh, debunk a myth about your profession, man, what would it be? Every, you know what, every, pretty much every cybersecurity professional I have met, none of them have been your stereotypical kind of nerd profile. Absolutely none of them. All of these ICS security guys, uh, they're all brilliant because otherwise they wouldn't be in the field and doing what they're doing. But, oh, my God, are these guys ridiculous personality-wise. And it's, you, know, you, you, you meet them at, at conferences, and you spend some time with them, and you get to pick their brains. And they're, just, they're a lot of fun to be around, but they're also the first one buying the beer. They're also the first one buying the, the first round of shots. They are by no means wallflowers, if that makes any sense. I, I find more bookish types in the, the standard process engineer genre than I do in OTIT. Gotcha, man. Very good. You drilled that one, buddy. <laughs> so if you were to talk about when you're in that moment of flow, man, things are really rocking. You're enjoying what you're doing. You're the happiest uh, in your career. What are you doing at that moment, man? I'm, I'm just enjoying where I am. It's living in the now, not living in the past and where you where you thinking about where you could have been. And it's not sitting there doing nothing but dreaming about the future and where you could be. It's living in the now. It's enjoying what you're doing. And and it's just rocking and rolling and moving right along, you know? Very good. What are you studying? What Anything that you're curious about or that you're things that you're spending some time learning about? Yeah, I am. I am. Um, Working my way towards the uh, the CWNE certification. That's the Certified Wireless Network Expert. That there's a, a trail of certifications that you have to get before you can go for your CWNE. I'm about halfway there, and the CWNE itself, you a- there's no test for it. It's an application process. You have to have these prerequisite certifications. Um, like I said, I'm about halfway there. There's a community aspect where you know they look and 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 take a look at your involvement in the Wi-Fi community as a whole, and then they they look at have you been published? What have you been doing? How are you contributing to help this technology move forward? And all that's really important to me. And, and it's one of the reasons I started my blog. Because when you look out there, man, there are so many resources and so many podcasts and blogs and so many people in the Wi-Fi community. And, and they're all about uh, higher ed and they're all about private industry or they're, or I'm sorry, they're all about enterprise and they're all about hospital or they're all about doing like football stadiums and these just mass uh, productions. But there's no real community out pushing forward educational stuff for industrial wireless communication. And on my blog, I'm trying to get something started and trying to to push forward and build that community because it's becoming more prevalent. And when you bring a guy who's used to doing nothing but enterprise Wi-Fi and into a, an industrial uh, environment, he's already batting at a negative because he's got all these challenges he's not even familiar with because the environment's so different. We need more people to be aware of and support um the industrial wireless community. Uh, there needs to be more education in that. There needs to be more certifications specifically for this environment. And I got to hand it to the to CWNP, which is the, the, the governing body of the CWNE. That's the, the Certified Wireless Network Professional. They just recently came out with a certification called the CWSA, the Certified Wireless Solutions Administrator, which is the first vendor neutral uh, wireless certification that has anything to do with industrial protocols and industrial wireless aspects. It gets into IIoT. It gets into some of your wireless industrial protocols. And I got to give it to those guys. And I'm so happy to, to see that they're actually starting to put some certification material together specifically for this aspect of wireless communication and trying to help build that support. 
I feel you, man. I feel you. I mean, one quick question. A lot of times, you know, LinkedIn special groups or things like that are custom tailored to the to certain topics. Does anything like that exist for the listener that may want to to participate or support industrial Wi-Fi and, and learn more? Uh, you know, honestly, not that I'm aware of. And I've searched, and there's a ton of regular wireless groups out there, but I haven't really been able to come across anything that is not directly vendor related. Okay. Does that makes sense. Vendors are out there pushing their wares for industry, be it, be it fluid mesh, be it Siemens, be it Cisco, be it whoever, you know, but the whole point is for a vendor neutral group for inner support of the community. And, and that's just what I'm not seeing anywhere out there for industrial Wi-Fi. Okay. And so I'm, I'm trying in my own way to get that started with talking with you guys, with the creation of my blog. Someone's got to start it. Hey wild. man, you're starting a revolution, brother. And, uh, <laughs> That's great. We're proud of you and we're glad to support you and wishing you the best there. And we love to take these hero episodes, man, and get a little bit off of work and get to the more personal side. So share with our listeners, if you will, some things you enjoy, maybe some hobbies or things you like to do in your off time. I'm a big supporter of, of autism awareness. My son is on the spectrum. So everything I do, I do for him. So that's a big part of my life outside of work is is just talking with others in other groups and helping educate people you know, in awareness of autism in general. Otherwise, we're big water people. We love getting out there in the water, be it in the beach or be it in the pool or be it at a water park. That's probably our biggest fun time. And then my wife is a, a Disney addict. I tell people I actually work to support her Disney habit because we, we go just about every year down to pay homage to the giant mouse and spend all our money and just have a great time. So that that's our other passion is just all these just amazing family trips down to Disney. Man, that is awesome, man. That's why I love talking and visiting the guys at GPA. You're right there in Wilmington. It's beautiful part of North Carolina anyway. So man, it sounds like you got a lot of fun stuff going. And I, I didn't realize on the autism part, but hats off to you, man, for the stuff you're supporting and, and working with with your son there, man. That's, that's that's awesome. I appreciate it. So you got one son, you said? Is there any other kid? Oh, I, I have twins. I have uh, boy girl twins. Nice. Yeah. And they are they're awesome. And as with any parents, they're my reason for doing everything that I do. I'm just so happy that I have a job that I love to do because that makes it a whole lot easier. Some of the travel can be tough sometimes with, with Skype and, and, and all these different video chat protocols. It's even when I'm on the road every night, we're talking and laughing and carrying on. So. Gotcha, man. So for the listener that may be visiting down in your neck of the woods, man, what's some local hot spots you like to hit up? Where do you have to go if you're in a Wilmington area? It all depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a great burger, then you got to go hit Wendy's Tavern. If you are looking for beach time, there's so much beach around here from Topsail and Surf City to Wrightsville Beach to Carolina Beach to Oak Island. You can find your flavor of beach, man. It's just, it's awesome. There's a ton of history around here from the battleship North Carolina to historic downtown Wilmington. This was part of Blackbeard's stomping ground. So there's a lot of uh, nautical history around here too. That's one of the things I like about this town because there's so much going on. We are a destination. We're at the very end of I-40, but we're a college town. We're a beach town. We're a tourist town, but we're starting to, to develop a, a fairly strong manufacturing base around us as well. So there, there's a lot. This area has a lot to offer. No doubt, man. And you, So you did say you have to do some travel with work. Is that pretty regular? Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Probably 40% of my time is on the road. So I'm going all these places. I love when I go to Texas. I've really enjoyed Alabama, Indiana, and, and a lot of Midwest states. And, and I, most of my travel tends to be down in the, the southern part of the country. But no matter how great a town I go to, Wilmington is always home. I hear you, man. Nothing like getting back home, right? Yes, sir. Well, you know what? I've lived on the coast so long now that if I'm gone for more than uh, a week or two, things start smelling funny because the salt's not in the air. That's right. That's right. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott, man, this has been a lot of fun. We we love to, to kind of tie these eco ass why episodes up, the hero episodes in particular with the why, man. And, and what we're trying to talk to here, the whole purpose of the eco ass why hero episodes is to inspire people. And I think you've definitely done that. And you maybe hopefully you, you perk some interest out there, definitely looking into the industrial Wi-Fi and space and Maybe that's that somebody's going to do a little more research now that they've heard you talk about it and how passionate you are about it. But what would be your 
personal why, man? What what drives you? You know, honestly, I just have this a passion for wireless communications. I really enjoy it. It's it's like magic. It's amazing it even works. It's amazing that radio communications was ever even really discovered, being that it's not something you can feel, touch, or taste. And that's one of the things that really keeps me going. I've really helped push GPA to, to more and more industrial wireless work. And I just have so much fun with it. I really enjoy the challenges of it. And then when the job's done, just seeing everything work, you know, it's that personal satisfaction of a job well done. Absolutely, man. If there's something about that satisfaction that just, just drives you to, you just want more, it does, right? man. It does. And I don't know. If anybody wants to check me out, they can check me out on LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter at American McNeil. And don't forget to, to hit my blog, The Industrial Wireless Shop at WordPress. Absolutely. You know? We'll definitely put your blog and you know, I think we can even put some of your social ways of people to contact you in this in the show notes as well for those that want to want to talk to you man that'd be great i love talking about this stuff and i'll sit there and talk somebody's ear off about it because to be honest with you my my wife doesn't care what about what i do so it's you know i don't really get to talk about it here at home (laughs) but she's a teacher so she's got her own stuff that she's got to get taken care of i got you man this has been a lot of fun scott really enjoyed talking with you and and learning more about you personally and and just thank you for being so open and sharing with our listeners and i really enjoyed this conversation buddy oh no worries man i hope to come back and talk with you guys again it's always a good time talking with eco thank you for listening to eco ask why this show is supported ad free by electrical equipment company eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com. 